Hello everyone, today we talk about 1-carbon metabolism. So, what is the 1-carbon metabolism? Folate-dependent single-carbon reactions are important in amino acid metabolism and in various biosynthetic pathways which help to produce DNA, RNA and various neurotransmitters. The 1-carbon metabolism exists because one carbon groups are too volatile and need to be attached to something while being processed. There are various ways of moving groups of atoms which contain a single carbon atom using the following molecules. The first one being THF or tetrahydrofolate, S-adenosylmethionine which is the principal methyl donor in the body and is required for all transmethylation reactions. and vitamin B12, which act as a coenzyme in methylation and rearrangement reactions. So the principal takeaway from this is that all of these single carbon reactions are dependent on folate. So we need to know a little bit about folic acid. Folate is also known as vitamin B9 and it is derived from dietary sources like bread and green leafy vegetables. It is a precursor for the formation of tetrahydrofolate. The tetrahydrofolate acts as a carbon donator and is a cofactor for various several processes. So in the 1-carbon metabolism, we have these 1-carbon units like methyl, methylene, formyl, form amino and methanyl. They attach to the tetrahydrofolate at the N5 or N10 site or they can attach to both N5 and N10. For example, N5 N10 methanyl tetrahydrofolate which attaches to N5 as well as N10. The same is seen in methylene tetrahydrofolate. Okay. For my Methanyl and methylene tetrahydrofolate are the active folates. They take part in purine and pyrimidine synthesis, which is required for cell division and RNA and DNA synthesis. They form methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is the reduced form of folate, which helps in regeneration of the tetrahydrofolate. So, as we said before only, Folate is required for synthesis of tetrahydrofolate. This occurs with the help of enzyme dihydrofolate reductase, which is inhibited by methotrexate. That is why methotrexate is used as an anti-cancer drug because it helps in inhibiting this enzyme and hence inhibits DNA and RNA synthesis. Now, the tetrahydrofolate forms active folates which take part in purine and pyrimidine synthesis and they then form reduced folate that is methyl THF which helps in regeneration of THF via an enzyme homocysteine methyl transferase. This enzyme helps in conversion of homocysteine to methionine and requires vitamin B12. Deficiency of either folic acid or vitamin B12 will result in increased homocysteine in the blood as this step will be blocked. As a result, there will be homocysteinemia which can result in cardiovascular disease, stroke, DVT and pulmonary embolism. Homocysteine methyl transferase deficiency can also result in homocysteinemia. Now, Coming on to the proper 1-carbon metabolism, it can be classified into generation of 1-carbon units and utilization of 1-carbon units. So first, we'll talk about the generation of 1-carbon units. So here, the formate released from glycine and tryptophan combines with tetrahydrofolate to form N10-formyl tetrahydrofolate. 
histidine contributes to the for amino fragment to produce N5 for amino tetrahydrofolate. When serine is converted to glycine with the help of serine hydroxymethyl transferase, N5N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate is formed. And finally, choline and betaine contribute to the formation of N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. Please remember, this reaction, which is catalyzed by SHMT enzyme, is a reversible reaction. Okay? Now we'll talk about the utilization of the 1 carbon units. N10 formyl THF helps in formation of purines and of formyl methionine. N5 N10 methanyl THF helps in formation of purines. And N5 N10 methylene THF can resynthesize serine as it is a reversible reaction and it also takes part in thymidylate synthesis. This requires enzyme thymidylate synthase. In which DUMP is converted to TMP. This requires N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate, which then forms tetrahydrofolate. And this enzyme is inhibited by a drug called as 5 fluorouracil. So that is the clinical implication here. Finally, there is formation of N5 methyl THF, which helps in regeneration of the tetrahydrofolate. It also helps in the regeneration of the principal methyl donor that is SAM. So this reaction is done with the help of enzyme homocysteine methyl transferase where the methyl THF forms THF and there is conversion of homocysteine to methionine. This methionine then again forms homocysteine along with synthesis of s adenosyl methionine. So, if there is folate deficiency, it will affect the entire 1 carbon metabolism because all of these reactions are folate dependent. So, how to assess folate deficiency? One, we can measure the serum folate level, which is normally 2 to 20 Ng per ml. Red cell folate levels may be measured. Histidine load test is also useful. ICAR excretion, that is amino imidazole carboxamide ribose 5-phosphate excretion is also a good diagnostic tool. Please remember methotrexate also inhibits ICAR transformylase enzyme. And hence it inhibits folate metabolism. In addition to inhibiting dihydrofolate reductase enzyme, it also inhibits ICAR transformylase. Serum homocysteine, there will be homocysteinemia. Peripheral blood smear will show megaloblastic anemia. And now, how to differentiate folate deficiency from vitamin B12? They both will show megaloblastic anemia and homocysteinemia. But in addition to that, vitamin B12 will show methyl malonic aciduria and progressive peripheral neuropathy. Methyl malonic aciduria occurs because B12 is required for function of methyl malonyl CoA mutase enzyme which converts methylmalonyl-CoA to succinyl-CoA. Deficiency of vitamin B12 causes increased methylmalonyl-CoA to accumulate, which is excreted in the urine. So this finishes 1-carbon metabolism. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe.